Then you got people from China. There's certain qualities that they exhibit that you can say that person is from China. They say, oh, that person is from Africa. And then sometimes you say, not from Africa, they're from Nigeria, Africa. Or Ghanaian, African. Or South Africa. In other words, you can even tell the difference by the qualities among the people who look alike. That's how powerful culture is. Number five, culture is defined as the characteristics of distinction. And number six, culture is what we consider to be acceptable behavior and standards we agree on. That's our culture. In heaven, worship is reserved only for the king. So when Lucifer decided he want peace of the action, he violated number six. <laughs> he violated, but he misbehaved. <laughs> you can't behave like that in the kingdom. Only one person gets worship in the kingdom. It's the king. So if you want some of the worship, you misbehave him. You, you break in the standard. And you know what God did, right? Expelled him immediately. Any human or any angel or anything that attempts to attract worship to themselves, God, I promise you, will destroy it. I guarantee it. I'm going to show you scriptures in a minute where God actually threatens us. Because if you understand what worship is, no one else could get it but God. And number seven, culture is what we call the accepted way of life in, among a people. We accept this as a way of life. Worship is an acceptable way of life in a kingdom. Everybody in a kingdom worships. But the question is, why do they worship? Let's take another look at this. The culture of kingdoms is completely opposite to democracy. There is no worship in democracy. You and I do not worship prime ministers. We don't worship presidents. We don't worship mayors. We don't worship senators or parliamentarians or congressmen. We don't worship anyone in our governments because it's completely opposite to a kingdom. Now this creates some problems because you see, if you were born in a democracy, read in a parliamentary democracy, grew up in it, educated in it, then you pick up the Bible and try to worship. There's no concept of king, no concept of kingdom, no concept of the culture of kingdoms, and so you have to do, kind of wing it. <laughs> How do they call it, wing it? Wing it means that you try to make up some things and hope he accepts it. And most of Christianity is winging it. We got all these complicated, massive, I mean, just massive worship services organized. We got some stuff that God even probably don't recognize. I mean, all kind of stuff involved. Bell ring, a little bell ringing at this time, you know, little incense burning there, you know, a little cup here, a little bread there, you know, a little thing there, a little that there, a little there, a little thing, the ding over there, that, 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 that thing. And God said, what y'all doing? And we got it all laid out, you know, because, well, you know, we're going to have our three fast songs and then a medium song and then a real slow song. Drop the music below, you know, cut the lights down. All right, here we go. Now get the mood now. All right, I got it. Okay. I think we got it. No, we ain't got it yet. Keep pushing, 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 pushing. See? And God said, what y'all doing? When you don't understand kingdoms, you got to wing it. Number two, there's, there's no worship in democracies. None. Not a single drop of worship in democracies. And the problem is, we were born in democracies. Number three, only kingdoms worship. Only kingdoms worship. Why is that important? And why do you worship in a kingdom? I'm going to answer your question tonight. Why do citizens worship a king? That's an important thing. We don't worship the prime ministers. We don't worship the president of a country. But we worship kings. Because in kingdoms, there's a different relationship between the citizen and the king. The problem is understanding. Understanding. Do you know why the Bible says you can pray without ceasing? Because if you are in a kingdom, it's impossible to stop praying. If you are, the Bible says, bless the Lord, how many times? 
Now, bless means to praise, worship. Okay, how can you do that all the time? In the kingdom, it's necessary. I'll show you why. Both prayer and praise and worship are perpetual in a kingdom because of the relationship between the citizen and the king. Let me explain how it works. <laughs> the message of the Bible is about a kingdom, right? We know that. So kingdoms, therefore, are what God gave the earth. When man fell, he lost the kingdom. When Christ came to earth, he came to bring a kingdom, not a religion. And therefore, the only message that Jesus had to preach was a kingdom message. We know that. Today, in the day session, I showed you so many scriptures, some of you all choked. All he preached was what? The kingdom. The kingdom. He brought a kingdom to earth, not a democracy, not a republic, not a socialist regime, not communism. He brought a kingdom. He didn't bring a religion. A kingdom. Therefore, we have to understand how kingdoms work. What is a kingdom? I want to repeat the definition. A kingdom is the sovereign rulership or governing influence of a king over his territory. Impacting the territory with his personal will and his purpose and his intent. Producing a citizenry of people that reflect the king's nature. So a kingdom is actually a country under the rulership of a king. Very important. A kingdom, therefore, is a country. Now, every kingdom must have the following. Real quick, write them down. Every kingdom must have a king. They must have a lord. They must have a territory. They must have a constitution. They must have citizens. They got to have laws. They must have rights and privileges. Every kingdom has armies and servants, the Bible calls them. Every kingdom has commonwealth. That's the economy of a kingdom. And every kingdom must have personal and corporate worship. The last one is very natural. Now, that list is important to remember. When you study kingdoms, you've got to study this list. I'm going to leave it there for you can write it down. Number one, every kingdom must have a king. It must have a lord, a lord. The kingdom must have a territory. It must have a constitution by which the people live. It has citizens, not members. It has laws, not suggestions. Every kingdom must have rights and privileges. And this is very unique in kingdoms. Because in kingdoms, rights and privilege separates you from democracy. You know, if your president or prime minister decide that they like you, and they're going to give you 500 acres of, you know, just that they like you, give you a gift. Do you know what they call a democracy? Corruption. They would fire the prime minister. But if a king gave you 5,000 acres of his land, they call it favor. In democracy, it's corruption. In kingdom, it's favor. Why? I'm going to show you in a minute why. Now, the most important words on this list is number one, two, for understanding kingdoms. King and Lord. Everybody say King and Lord. Very important. Now, why is Lordship so important in the kingdom? Please understand this. This is where worship begins. All kingdoms are built on kings. Kings are not voted into power. They are born kings. And kingdoms emit from kings. But here's the main clincher here, number two. All kings are automatically Lord. Why are they Lord? Because the Lordship of kings is what distinguishes them from all other forms of leadership. The Lordship peace is what makes worship natural in a kingdom. Everybody say Lord. Say it again, Lord. Say it loud, Lord. If you don't understand lordship, you can never worship. If you read the largest book in the Bible, which is a worship book, it's right in the middle of the Bible. If you read that book carefully, you'll find that every time the word worship is written or praise is written, the word lord is somewhere in the sentence. Because you cannot have a lord and not worship. Let me explain this. What makes a king different from every other form of leader is the lordship piece. A prime minister cannot be lord. A president can never be lord. Why? Because lordship gives the king sovereignty over all that exists within his kingdom. 